three. You ready? Let's light this candle. Go! I already started. Patron appreciation. Let's get the shit rocking. Mrs. Thomas is joining us for this particular episode. You got nothing to say, though? You just want to do expressions? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> enough um i suppose so expressions could be enough i mean it is an expression of sorts in most languages body language however radio. people on like a podcast can't necessarily hear the body expressions that you're doing well fortunately you haven't started this on a podcast so this is only on youtube but some people listen to it when they're like but driving I'm home or something like that and they would just they're just your dead air and that's Mrs. Thomas doing expressions. They would have to just in their mind to create a mental image of what those expressions are. Um, but hey, you know, our society needs to have more visual imagery and all that good stuff. So Amen, that, might, that might be a good thing. That might be a good thing. All right. Patron Appreciation Special. So why don't you tell the audience what Patron Appreciation Special is? Contributor Appreciation. Contributor Appreciation. So initially when we first started this, it was Patron Appreciation. And then... Um, a lot of people contribute through like PayPal or, or you know, or, or in the mail, send checks in the mail. Some people don't like using electronics for that stuff. And so we just call it contributor appreciation. My thank you to the audience. Because honestly, like YouTube is an untrustworthy you, wait, wait, actor. Wait. I say this you all the time. You literally <clears throat> just asked me to explain what But you were being real slow was. on the uptick. So I thought you might have wavered in your commitment to telling the audience no, that not, that's the only reason i'm here i was trying to help you spiel. out i was trying to help you out is to say i was trying to bail you out welcome to contributor appreciation if you are just joining us thank you if you are not aware this is the weekly show that jamal takes out to give thanks for everyone who contributes to the channel as he stated um it was originally patron appreciation because there is a platform called patron where people support monthly um for the channel but people give through Streamlabs, Super Chats, PayPal, and so it is everyone who contributes. People share, they like, subscribe. Just viewing is a contribution to the channel. And yes. Once a week, that's we true. ask what you, the contributors, would like for him to discuss, and that is what fuels today's show. In keeping with the original theme, once a week there is a post that goes up on Patreon, and it says, what do you guys want to hear this Sunday? And we use that to create the content for today's show. Um, if you are a patron... Please do not forget to log in weekly to give us your input. You can send in a personal message or you can sh comment on the post. I was going to say share, but that was not the right word. Oh. You can comment on the post that's put up weekly. I thought you were um, drop four letter word. Just, no. just pulling just up, pulling it. Joe Biden just out of the mm -hmm. blue. It's like, what? That doesn't no. even fit in the language that you no. are using. If you're contributing on PayPal, Streamlabs, Super Chat, and you have an idea for a topic, the email should be in the link down below. Or yes. if you want to send it with your contribution, then we will use that as well. But again, thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone. And if you are not familiar with what Patreon is, because again, people are not. Essentially, it is a way for you as a viewer to contribute to a content creator. You say, hey, I like his channel. I'm watching pretty regularly. I want to make sure that he can can stream and create content consistently. So I'm going to make a commitment as little as $1 and every dollar helps um, to give to this contributor monthly. And so that is what the patron platform is. Um, so thank you to everybody who contributes monetarily. But again, not everybody can and everybody wants to share the videos, like the videos, and make sure that if you're enjoying the content that you subscribe um, and hit the notification icon next to the little subscribe button. That's the way that you get notifications that Jamal is going live and putting yeah. up new content. So welcome to today's show. So let's do the news. Let's do the news. This one isn't. Well, I guess it's news. It's news. It's funny it's news. Entertainment news. I I, I laughed so hard. I told you for things on my show when I laugh. Um, and I, I, I enjoy them. I tend to bring them to my audience because I think my audience may also laugh at those things. Killmonger. I think that was his name. Killmonger, right? right? Killmonger. That was in Black Panther. Black the Panther. dude that Black Panther killed. Michael that had the, B. Jordan. Killmonger. The one that had the bad his upbringing and became a killmonger because, you know, his, he, he had daddy issues. So Killmonger um, killed is in Apollo in Creed. And left him there to die. People have issues, man. I mean, people have all sorts of bad shit that happened to him. 
He became a killer. And look, I'm one of those people that for the most part believe that decisions is, you know, most of those things aren't choice, that, that we're kind of projectiles, we're ballistic, they have a little conscious intellect in, in that part. But he literally became a kill killer and named himself Killmonger because he killed so much and so often. Um, do the daddy issues overcome the Killmonger stuff? Like, for example, Adolf Hitler had certain insecurities brought about by the Versailles Treaty and the things that took place in Germany after the war. Now, does the fact that he had these kind of insecurities and all of this other stuff from the standpoint of his upbringing excuse the Holocaust? I don't think it does. I mean, that's kind of the same argument with the Killmonger thing. Yes, he had daddy issues. I don't doubt that it would be a difficult life. Even me, I would have a hard time reining myself back from, you know, not being a homicidal killer at that point. Um, he says, Michael Williams says he was getting revenge for his dad. It wasn't daddy issues. They killed his father. That's literally a daddy issue. But daddy issues like, oh, my daddy left. And so now every male that comes into my life and I don't know how to form relationships. That's daddy issues. Daddy issues. It's kind of like a circle, right? There are 30 different circles. Well, All of them are circles. Dad, that's like, that's, that's a little different. I'm just saying. It's, Giovanna, it's Liviana, literally a daddy thank issue. You. Giovanna, first pay, uh, <laughs> what is this? First stream labs of the show. Thank you, Giovanna. Says, can't hang today, but left a thumbs up and got linked to watch later and share. Ah, oh, thanks. Says, live long and prosper. Oh, I nailed it. Nice, nice. Thanks, Giovanna. But nevertheless, Killmonger is also training for Apollo Creed. I was training after Apollo Creed. And the in movie, that, Apollo the movie Creed. Apollo Creed, and in that, Killmonger is a boxer. Now, Killmonger, who's now a boxer in Apollo Creed, he's pretending to be a boxer. Michael B. Jordan <laughs> is pretending to be a boxer in the movie Apollo, Apollo Creed. Apollo Creed. Now, he has to get boxing training. So, you know, he, he can lose, he, he uses his hands. So he can be realistic. And, and train. you've seen Killmonger's body. He's, you know, he's pretty built. He's, he's built like a tank. He's, whoa, that's an understatement. But listen to this. He he runs too close to the sun on this one. He flies too close to the sun on this one. He goes too far. Killmonger and the cash that he's been getting from playing Killmonger and then pretending to be Apollo Creed. Sometimes actors get into their heads just because they're acting at something. They can actually do the thing that they act at. He's like, I'm swole. I was able to hold my own in Black Panther. I mean, Killmong, he got me in the end, but I was able to hold my own. I mean, missing the point that he had that serum in him that allowed him to do that. But missed that point. He Fair enough. He in the gym training and getting swole. Yeah. And he probably said, I, I kicked Black Panther's ass. I'm Killmonger. So, yeah. I can take Roy Jones Jr. The who now, what now? Now. Take who? Roy Jones Jr. Now, he says, he says this. Let's hear him say it. I don't want you to hear him say it. Because, I mean, you know, it's like all the acting in the world does not prepare you for what you would be at the end um, from the standpoint of being at the end point of a ring with Roy Jones Jr. And maybe some of the younger people who watch this channel don't know who Roy Jones Jr. is and maybe have not seen those fights but Roy Jones Jr. is not something. Yeah, he's something else. Like, it, it's, he's beyond And he's boxing. like 50 now. He's 50, but he's still fighting. So that's not even like his prime is not now. Yeah, his prime is not but, now. But in his prime, oh my God, oh my God. Roy Jones Jr. used to fight. He, he used to taunt sometimes with putting his hands behind his back when he's fighting guys. Because he was that fast, and there was such a differential and skill level between who he was and who everybody else at the middleweight um, was. And he couldn't be touched. There was no, there wasn't even a competition between anybody else. Okay, play to me. So play let's, let's, let's hear see, him. Let's, let's hear him. Let's see. Him. Again. We're about to tell you right now, Sparkle Boom. Too close to the sun. I like that name, Sparkle Boom. Too close to the sun. So I've been working out with Rocky. I've been working out with, like, you know what I'm saying, like Apollo Creed. I'm going to do my thing. Absolutely. So, now, who all time would you want to step into? Does, the no, he's Whether it's a boxer, wrestler, UFC Man. fighter, anybody. Like Roy Jones, bro. Roy Jones? Roy Jones, that's my... You just fucked up. Wait, wait, play the rest, play the rest. You just fucked he's up. He's just joking. Do, bro. You think you can hold your own? I feel like I can do my thing a little bit. Yeah? I can hold my thing right now, but in his prime, nah, he'll probably knock my ass out. But, like, right now, I can do my thing. All right. You can act? Because that's your thing, bro. <laughs> right. You can do your thing. Right. <laughs> right. I like that. I can do my thing. 
can do my thing. I can you do can my act. thing. Right. You your thing act. is acting. Acting. And here's the catch. You will get knocked the fuck out. And you will not be acting while you are getting knocked the fuck out. It is a different thing. Like, are you serious? Like, it's one thing to act where you're in a ring with a guy and, you know, it's like you're sparring. You're like, you're like bouncing off of the guy. You, you know, you move your hands and all this other stuff. But he's not going to hit you. And he's not going to try to take your head off. And he's not going to try to embarrass you in a stadium full of people. He's not this guy that's had 40 different matches where he's won all these guys. You know, that's a different thing. That's a different thing. Being in a match where somebody is trying to literally take your head off. And he is getting paid handsomely to do so. It's a different thing than pretending, pretending. to be a box. Now, he did train to be Killmonger. a very competent pretender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was a good pretender. I don't take it away from him. And again, I don't even doubt that the average guy <laughs> he could knock out. I mean, just the average guy in a bar, you know, that has no fighting ability, you know, does not swole. Fair enough. But Roy Jones? Oh, God. See, I thought... You have too high of an opinion of yourself, I dog. thought he was going to say something like, oh, man, I'd love to get in a ring with him. I can learn so much. You know, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, no, I could get, I could do my thing. Name some random fighter. Own. Name some random person. You know, like, um, you know, Julio Chavez. Just some random guy. It'd be like, that guy. And they'd be like, who the fuck is that guy? And see, you can skate on that because nobody knows who that guy is. So you can say, yeah, I can knock that guy out. And you might be right. Some random guy named who... But don't do Roy like, Jones. I think, I think if he, I thought he was going to go a different way. Even a moderate I fighter. I thought he was going to say something along the lines of like, yeah, I could learn a lot from him. I'd love to get in the ring with him so he can teach me some things. When, it would be a great opportunity. But then, and then I was like, well, maybe that's where he's going. But then he literally <laughs> said, I feel like I could take, I could take him now. I could take maybe him. not in his prime. Not even his prime. Right now, I could do my thing. But, I could act the shit out that fight. But the beauty of it is, Roy Jones is still fighting. Roy Jones heard him say that. <laughs> Roy Jones heard him say that. Roy Jones says, bring this shit on. This is Roy Jones responding to this. Oh, I thought this was the greatest thing ever. He can contact you and get my number, so there's no question about how can I find, no, you know how to find Roy. Call TMZ, get Roy to come down here. So I ain't running from nobody. If Michael B wants this for real, Contact Roy Jones Jr. and we will make it happen. Yeah, see? You got my number. He can contact you and get my number. So there's no question about how can I find. No, you know how to find Roy. Call TMZ. Get Roy's number from TMZ. Let's make it happen. Roy, now he said in the video, he said, I think he would probably have killed me back in his prime. True. That's true. How about yeah. now, though? Do you actually give him any chance? To beat you now, even though you are 49, Roy. I don't. I know he can't beat me still because, I mean, I know he's probably in better condition because he's younger, and though he can go, probably think he can go longer, and probably thinks he might be able to even outwork me now. But I'm a vet. I'm an old school vet. <laughs> old school. That's the thing that I was thinking. Just because you are in good physical condition, that's not the end of it. Does not mean that you can win a boxing match. Not just not against someone who is seasoned. I mean like skill and technique comes along with just yeah, it's, being swole. Yes it does. It's, yeah, I, 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 I mean I, I don't know what he went through to train for that. I mean somebody said that there's like coaches and stuff like I that. Don't I don't doubt. I feel you. I don't doubt but that how they long had has Roy Jones been I don't doubt that they were boxing. that they put boxers in the match. Meaning that he they had him fighting against boxers yeah, yeah. to make him look like training. he can act like a real boxer. So I don't doubt that. Um, but there is no situation where those trainers put him in there with somebody who wanted to take his head off. That's a different animal. I'm sorry. And Roy Jones at that. Um, by the way, Anthony is backing out of this. He His wants name no. Is not Anthony. Oh, I'm sorry, Michael. I don't know. I keep calling him Anthony. Michael B. Jordan. That's the reason I keep calling him Anthony. He's backing out of this. Oh, he's like, he's that. like, yeah, man. He's like, yeah, so I don't want to. Did, did did he respond after Roy Jones Jr. was like, you can come get some? He was backing out of it. He wants no parts of this. He wants no parts of this. He's Jordan like, said he was just hamming it up for the camera. Yeah, he was. It kind of felt like he was just like, yeah, I could take him. I could take him. Like. But you got to do that with somebody who's not still fighting. Like, well, I mean, 
like you talk a lot of shit about stuff. Think of a boxer mentality. Just kind of think of a boxer's mentality. A boxer's mentality is like a chess player's mentality, especially a barbershop chess player's mentality. There is a lot of shit talking that goes along with that, and there's a ton of ego that goes along with that. Wait a minute. And for to be Roy Jones and this actor is saying that I can take him now, like not back then, but now. 49-year-old Roy Jones, if I got in the ring, I could knock his ass out. And Roy Jones is like, I am going to get that motherfucker. Fine, let's do this. That's going to be a ton of cash, and I'm going to knock the shit out of this actor who thinks he can do... Like, all of this. I don't know why he didn't... Why did he think that this was just going to go nowhere? Why did Killmonger think... Why did Killmonger think this was going to go nowhere? Let me say, in in, in line with... Killmonger. Boxers. And Wait, wait, one more point. TMZ... Took that from him and then went to Roy Jones. Of course this is they did. <laughs> TMZ of course went, they did. This, is this is so this fucking is funny. TMZ said, "All right, yeah. So you think you can beat Roy Jones? Hey, Roy Jones. This guy said he could beat you. Of course. You need, you two need to get this match We're going. Investigating. That's hilarious. Okay, so in this same line before we move on, yeah. I just thought it was really funny because my uncle, you know, the men in my the men in my family are tough men. They're men. They're manly men. They're men. Manly men. men. Um, and my uncle, who was over 45, I don't know if he was 50 yet at the time, mm. but he was in the gym and he used to like train and, you know, exercise, whatever. And he was watching some guys boxing at the gym and along the same line, like barbershop talk or whatever you want to yeah. call it. He was talking shit to the guys in the ring <laughs> so bad, so much so that the guy said, man, if you think you can better get your ass up here in the ring. And my uncle got, he got in the ring, right. And got. he fought him and he knocked his ass out. Well, see, and that's... since then, for like the last five years, my uncle has been boxing. Now, to be fair, they won't give him a match because they say he's too old. <laughs> because he started like really boxing when he was almost 50. Uh-huh. But I just thought it was funny how you were talking about like, especially boxers, like pride and trash talking and stuff It like is barbershop. He was literally standing on the side of the ring and was like, ah, man. I don't know what he was saying, but he was like... That's some barbershop that. shit, man. Like, if you're on the chessboard... Like, it, it depends on where you are. But f- from my standpoint, let me be racist for a moment. Blacks have a way of playing chess sometimes that has a lot of shit talking involved. And I don't say that as a negative. I say that as fucking awesome. I grew up at barbershop chess. Um, and some of my favorite people on this planet come from that particular culture and that particular area. And... You know, if you're on the side of the board, people talk shit. You're like, dude, if you want to get me, it's like, no, dog, I want to go. All right, then shut the fuck up then. Yeah, it's like that type of stuff. So I can totally see how a bunch of men roid it up. Roid. Look at my huge muscle and breasts. You know, those type of guys. Jocks. Not much in the head. And your uncle comes up and talks trash. Wait, 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 you're being racist. And your uncle talks Just trash. Just because they are fitness enthusiasts doesn't mean they don't have any brains. I would just like to go ahead and put that out there. Right. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. You can take the politically correct tone on this, but this channel is not for identitarians, and I'm just being honest. I don't Jocks know what that means. tend to not be very bright. But nevertheless, for the most part, you have these jocks, and your uncle is talking trash to these guys who are already in the gym, who are already... Showing their muscular skills in, in combat. What was that? That's how they used to fight in the old days. They used, you never seen those? The old footage? I have, but this is 2019, so I was wondering what the hell you were doing. I know, but, but that's, go ahead, that's go ahead. a classic boxing style. Like, classic. It's, it's that type of stuff. And I can totally see the moment that your uncle says anything, the action for the most part compels itself. There's no backing out of that process. Meaning, the moment your uncle says something, they say, if you want to get your old ass in the ring, I'll knock you out. Your uncle has to get in the ring. Um, uh, Sean McCoy says, not being politically correct, but I'm going to have to disagree with you all on the jocks not being smart. I'm joking! skill to play most games, sports, whatever, intelligence is usually high on that list. I'm joking, I'm joking. (laughs) Joking.